One of the main reasons why WordPress websites are slow is because they use the wrong page builders. The most popular page builders out there tend to bloat websites. If you want to get good performance right from the start, a good choice is to use Generate Blocks. We're going to use this plugin to create a simple layout for a blog homepage. Generate Blocks adds only six blocks, and with them, you can do a lot without code. We are still going to use some CSS to improve the layout a little bit, but it will be simple and nothing too complex. To give you some context, this is a blog for Coffee Radar, one of my side projects. CoffeeRadar.io is a website that helps users find specialty coffee shops and rate them more accurately, compared to other alternatives that are way more generic. And on this blog, I'm going to publish the updates about that project. Overall, this is a simple design and just enough to show you what you can do with generate blocks. So don't judge the design too much on this one. First of all, we create a new empty page and we set that as the home page. Then we can start adding the elements of the first section. We are not discussing in detail what I'm adding to the first section, but in brief, we try to use only the items from generate blocks, even for the main headline and image, because the default version from Gutenberg have less customization options compared to these ones. Then, before moving on, we need to talk uh, on how to handle the mobile version of the website with this plugin. In my previous video, I mentioned that whenever we add new CSS, we do that mobile first. The main reason, as I said, is that we write less code, but when using generate blocks, we are not coding anything. We just use their settings. And we must do the opposite. First, we add the desktop version of the item, and when that looks more or less right, we check its mobile version and adjust settings as needed. And again, here is not a problem because you are not writing code. In this case, the developers of this plugin probably made this choice because most users out there build their websites on a large screen. Most of them are not developers and they are not aware of the mobile first principle. So in this case, it's fine to proceed in this way because this is how the developers of this plugin built this feature. And also at this time, consider that on the Gutenberg editor, we don't have that feature yet. It's something that is made possible in this case by generate blocks. In this design, I want to create a more fluid and responsive title for this page, so just for this specific headline, I'm using only part of its settings. And later, I will add one line of CSS to improve it. Just like the improved versions of the image and the headline block, Generate Blocks adds a new query loop, which is more customizable than the regular query loop from Gutenberg. This block allows you to set a query to display a specific group of posts from your website. These can be blog posts, pages, and even other custom post types. Now I'm adding a new headline inside the query loop because this is a block that includes other blocks inside it. So you can create your own query loop template without code. And then we use the dynamic data setting to show the categories of these articles. Of course, this is not an H2, so we set that to paragraph. Then we can format that type to match the design. We also format the rest of the items inside the query loop. And of course, here, we just need to edit the design of the first item of the loop, and all the other items will be synchronized. There's a tricky part here, and if you watched my video about Gutenberg, you're already aware of this. Keep an eye on the document overview or on the navigation bar in this area, because in nested blocks, some settings are easy to miss. For example, to change the gap between the items, we need first to select the grid block that is inside the query loop, and then we can change the gap. So always check all the blocks in the navbar, to see what kind of settings you have and that you can use, because in this way, you can avoid using custom code when you can just use some settings. Whenever you're building a layout, one thing you may often need to do is to set the width of an element. The trick to do it here is to wrap your content in a generate blocks container and set the max width to this block. This plugin on its blocks includes for us this useful button, add to container, and we can just click on that to wrap an element. So here I select first our query loop, and then click on the button. Then with the container selected, we can set a max width to it. And next, we need to center this container. There are many ways to do this. One that I like is just setting the container margins on the x-axis to auto. Especially on pages where the layout is not extremely simple, we should use the containers from this plugin to create sections at the top level of our template. This will allow you to apply consistent spacing between your sections and help you in keeping the content organized. Then, every time you are done with the creation of a section, check the mobile version of the website again. It's an ugly preview, I know, but this can help you apply some spacing adjustments that will improve the experience for mobile users. In Generate Blocks, if you set margins on the desktop version, you will see them here as a reference, and you can override them only for smaller displays, or even for tablet displays, if you need to. 
Then I see I have uh, too many posts here in this query loop. And in this design, we just want to show four articles. So I'm setting the query loop for four posts per page. By default, the paging component for the query loop is not included. And in this case, uh, we will not need it because we just want to see the four latest blog articles. We can proceed to create the next section. Here, to optimize your process, you have a lot of choice with Gutenberg. For example, you may save an empty container with your correct spacing as a block pattern. So you can just keep using that once you saved it the first time. But in this case, I'm just going to duplicate the container block we just created and delete its contents. And probably later, we'll need to get rid of the max width of this block because it's a little bit special, this section. But that's pretty much it. And also, this is a good chance to learn about the grid block in the next section. This uh, is another key component of generate blocks uh, because this element will allow you also to create a column layout. In this case, uh, we just have uh, a simple two column layout, so an image on the left side with some text. Generate blocks will automatically add two containers blocks inside this grid, and these will act as columns, but they have the same settings that we already found in the containers that we use the sections. And I think this is cool because uh, you see, we can use uh, a small number of blocks, so they're always the same blocks with different settings to create endless layouts with this plugin. By default, of course, it looks ugly because we need to set the spacing and background colors we need. I'm going to speed up things here, but I suggest you to review all the settings for the container and the grid block to see what you can actually do with these. Because these two are the most important ones from this plugin and will allow you to build beautiful designs while keeping your WordPress website fast. And while you're building your page, always keep in mind, every time you complete a section for the stop screens, review your work with this toggle to check the mobile version of your page and make adjustments as needed. In the next section, in this design, we have a three column layout. It's a little bit different because in this one, we need a container for the section, a grid block with three columns, and also a headline and a paragraph outside the three columns. As you see in the design, we have the same card component repeated three times here. So this is a good candidate for a block pattern. And we can create this card with generate blocks and without code. In brief, this is just a set of columns nested in columns. So we start with the header of the card, which consists of a number and a title, and we can style them with their settings. There's a point here where I add a class to this element under the advanced tab. Probably you don't need to do it, but I prefer to add it when I have in mind to save a block pattern. If I ever need to apply some custom CSS, at least I have that class that I can reference later in my code. Another note here is that most option names that you see in generate blocks are also CSS property names. So if you wonder what the functionalities of these options are, of course, you can play with them. But if you want, you can also Google that settings name and you will find more details that are generally referred to CSS code. So as you move things around with this plugin, you may also learn some CSS along the way. For example, object fit applied to an image allows you to control its ratio and how it's presented to the user. I'm selecting cover here, which just means that the image will fill in its container with its correct proportions so it doesn't get squished horizontally or vertically. Before moving forward with the next section, I also wanted to mention briefly this other point about a mistake I made here. The header of the card is broken on mobile because it goes uh, on two lines. Sometimes uh, you have to first create a single component for the desktop, then test it on mobile. And only after that, uh, you can copy it. Since here, I didn't do that first, now I need to go back in each column to fix my mistake. So keep this in mind. Sometimes you need to test the individual component before testing the entire section. The next section is our last one, which is a simple call to action section with a background image. Keep in mind that in Gutenberg, you don't need to always click on the block inserter. You can also use a slash to quickly access all the blocks you need. This section consists of an inner container, which will help us to control the width of the actual content. And the background will be applied to the top level container, which is our main section container. Finally, before closing the video, I want to apply a couple of CSS rules. And if this is your first time with this type of editor, probably you don't need to do this with your own website. I always recommend instead of keeping it simple as possible if you're not a developer. Here, I go back to a mobile first approach. And first I'm copying and pasting some rules to get a slightly better typography on mobile. To create consistent typescales, if you are not a designer, you can use websites like gridlover and typescale.com. Then I add some other minor details and adjust the main page title. And to do that, I'm going to use the clamp property, which in brief, with one single rule, allows us to set a minimum size for this text, a preferred size, and a maximum size. And then I apply some fixes around padding to refine some spaces as well. This is the result. Like I mentioned, it's nothing complex. It's a pretty basic design, but hopefully this video gives you an idea on what you can build with generate blocks. This blog is also online right now at blog.coffeeradar.io. 
I don't know yet how much I'm going to use it, but if I use it frequently and it gets even a little bit of results on Google, we also do a redesign of this next year with a more advanced layout. That's all for this video. Let me know as always if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next one.